I'm Valder Beebe, host of the Valder Beebe Show. I am famously known for that celebrity interview. Interviews with today's pop icons, movie stars, and celebrities. Tune into our FM radio broadcast and our online broadcast. Visit ValderBeebeShow.com and SoundCloud.com slash ValderBeebeShow. I'll see you there. Dr. John Day and Melanie Truehill, thank you so very much for joining me. And I want my audience to know I was talking to you early. September is AFib Awareness Month, and I've got two great professionals here to help us understand. Melanie, women are usually first in my world, but I need to, Dr. John Day to go first to set the medical <laughs> to set the medical platform. So people, well, I got a lot of Facebook questions. People don't know what AFib is, and Dr. John Day, that's your question. Right, and it's really a shame because studies show that one in four American adults will have at least one episode of atrial fibrillation at some point during their lives. And what is atrial fibrillation? It's, it's really complete electrical chaos of the upper chambers of the heart, causing the heart to be fast, irregular, which can lead to strokes and other complications. Okay, Melanie, as the CEO of StopAFib.org, how can you add to that conversation? Well, certainly we want everyone to know what are the signs and symptoms of atrial fibrillation. It's not always easy to catch, so if you have uh, fluttering heartbeats or skipped heartbeats or dizziness or shortness of breath or like what I had, which was like a fish flopping around in my chest, we want people to know, to ask their doctors about it so they can get diagnosed and treated. Dr. Day, this is a serious condition. Who normally gets this? Really, anyone is at risk for atrial fibrillation. It can strike men, women, the old, the young. Genetic factors play a role. Then there are lifestyle factors. For example, high blood pressure, carrying extra weight may put people at risk. But even young, healthy athletes who really push their heart hard may also be at risk for this condition. Melanie, I'd like to ask you, as the CEO of this, what's your mission? What do you want to, what do you want to accomplish for us? Well, we certainly want to raise awareness of AFib so we can wipe out AFib-related strokes worldwide. We also want to make sure that those who are living with AFib don't have to suffer like I did, and they can get AFib under control and maybe even get rid of it. So we want to be able to give people their lives back. And that's why we get the word out during September for Atrial Fibrillation Awareness Month so we can get people diagnosed and treated before they have a stroke. Dr. Day, <clears throat> excuse me, I know the importance of getting the word out during September, but what if, if, if we need to tell our doctor we're not feeling good, we think something's wrong? How do we have that conversation? I think just being in tune with your body, listening to your body. If you're feeling tired, fatigued, you're having palpitations, check your pulse. If something's not right, let your doctor know. The diagnosis is easy. A simple EKG in the doctor's office may be able to nail down the diagnosis, or perhaps you need to wear a heart monitor at home or pick up one of these handheld apps that can help to get it diagnosed. And once you get it diagnosed, then you can get it treated. And there is such great treatment that we have nowadays to treat this condition. As I wrap up, Melanie, I'm going to ask you, you've had your personal encounter with yes. this. What would you like to say to people that are listening who've had maybe their personal encounter? Certainly tell your doctor, get this diagnosed, get treated, make sure you don't have a stroke, and make sure that you educate yourself. And we have a, di a discussion forum where people support each other, help each other to find their solution. It's important to get yourself educated and know what your options are and make sure you're getting 
the right treatments. Thank you for that advice. Dr. John Day, would you wrap us up? You started us off with the medical information. Would you wrap us up with the medical recommendation for those that are listening for me? So we talked about first, get diagnosed and then get treated. And if medications and lifestyle changes don't work, there are new procedures called, for example, a catheter ablation procedure where we're able to go into the heart without cutting, without stitches, using a three-dimensional mapping system. Uh, the one I like is the Insight Precision System. And with that, we can see, recreate the heart, find that needle in the haystack using a GPS-like mapping system to treat the specific area of the heart that's misfiring so that you can get your life back. And Melanie, online, where can they find out more information about atrial fibrillation? Thanks for asking at stopafib.org and also at myafibexperience.org, which is a site we've done with uh, American Heart Association. You guys have been great guests. I love people who bring information that's usable and it's available. Thank you guys for Thanks being here. Thanks for having us. Thank you so much, Valder. Thank you.